Hello everyone, this is Linda. Welcome back to my channel. Listing all of the files in a user's Google Drive account can be a bit cumbersome with the Google Drive API. If a user has a large number of files, you will end up doing a lot of pagination over the next page token. This is because the default number of file objects returned in the response is a maximum of 1,000. In this video, I thought we would look at how to search for files in the Google Drive API using the queue parameter in the file list method. Using the queue parameter, you can search for things like the file type and the file name, as well as the directory that the file is living in. My name is Linda Lawton. I'm a Google developer expert, and I have been working with the Google API since 2012. And I have been answering your questions on Stack Overflow for just as long. If you enjoy this video, please remember to give it a like. It helps me to know which videos that you've enjoyed and which ones I should create more of. Let's get started. I'm using JetBrains Writer for my ID. This will work no matter which IDE you're using. Use whichever suits you best. For this example, I will be creating an installed application. So I'm just going to create a .NET Core console application. In order to access the Google Drive, we will need to add a NuGet package. In this case, the Google Apis Drive v3 package, which will give us access to all of the methods we need in order to access Google Drive. The Google Drive API is a free API that returns file storage information about the user's drive account and the files that are stored there. A link to the package can be found in the companion blog post as well as the description box below. A user's Google Drive data is considered to be private data. Therefore, in order to access, we will need the user's permission. We will need to configure authorization. We will need a client ID and a client secret in order to access it. You'll need to create an installed application credentials over on Google Developer Console. If you haven't done this already, go do so now. And if you have any issues, I have another video which should be popping up here, which you can go and check out. And it'll explain how to create the installed application credentials. Just don't forget to enable the Google Drive API under Libraries. OK, welcome back. I assume you now have a credentials JSON file, so let's add it. At the top of my program class, I'm going to add a constant, which is the path to where the credentials JSON file is stored on my machine. It's a good idea not to put it in the root directory. Remember that the credentials file should always kept safe and secure. You shouldn't be sharing it with anyone. Now we will need to configure the Google Web Authorization Broker. The thing you need to remember about this is that it is only for installed applications. This code will not work if you are trying to use it as part of a web application. That is because the Google Web Authorization Broker opens the browser window for consent on the machine that it's running on. So in the case of a web server, it would try to open it on the web browser on the web browser on the web server, which wouldn't work because you need to display it to the user on the user's machine. Therefore, this code will only work for installed applications. The second thing you need to understand about Google Web Authorization Broker is File Data Store. File Data Store is used to store the user's credentials. By default, they're stored in the app data directory on Windows. You can change this by telling File Data Store exactly where you want to store the credentials. Google Web Authorization Broker requires that we pass it as a path to the credentials file that we downloaded from Google Developer Console. We can then also configure which user is storing or loading the credentials in File Data Store. If you want to denote different users on a multi-user system, you would simply change the username depending upon whose credentials you would like to load. Then all we need to do is create a drive service. All the requests that we send to the Google Drive API will then be performed through this drive service. 
Let's have a look at the simple default use of files list method. This will list the first 100 files it finds in the user's drive account in no particular order that I've ever found. And as you can see, the response is coming back properly. If we take a look at the response coming back from Google, we can actually see that one of the files has a MIME type of folder. That is because this is actually a folder. So what if we wanted to search for all of the files within that folder? Well, we could take the folder ID or file ID and pass it as a search for parents. So parents in the file ID would return all the files within that folder. And look at that, it does. One of the files in the response is actually a document. Well, what if we only wanted to see documents? Well, then we could actually search for the MIME type of document, and it would return only the documents. And see, now we are stringing them together. We're sending more than one search parameter. We're searching for only files of type document inside of our folder. The Google Drive API gives a lot of options on different things that you can search for. I recommend having a look at the documentation and trying it out yourself. Just remember the single quotes around all text objects, or you're going to have an issue. It'll come back with an error. Well, that's all for now, and I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on how to search for files in Google Drive using the Google Drive API. And as always, please remember to like and share if you enjoyed this, and please consider subscribing if you would like to see more of my Google Developer content. And as always, have a great day.